Hi, this is Jesper Sandel from VelocityPeak.com and in today's Cinema 4D tutorial we're gonna make this. So we're gonna make this kind of self-perpetual growth system using X particles. And we'll also look at how we can render this with Cycles 4D. Okay, let's start. Okay, so let's build this. And I am working in R21. I really like it. Um, I like the icons. The interface feels faster. I certainly like the darker viewport a lot. Uh, so overall, I am happy with it. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we need to create the initial particles that we're going to use as a source to spawn from. So let's do that. Let's first bring in a system. So X particles system xp system and uh, if i just hit play now we get that now i am going to use an object to emit from and uh, you could use a circle uh, if you want as well but i like to use an object and use it with a texture just so i can visualize where they're going to emit from so let's add a disk and uh, this is also new, I think, for R21. It comes in with just one disk segments, and the rotation segments is 16, so it's a low, uh, it's a low polygon version. Uh, but I'm going to keep it at 100%, and I am going to add a texture to this. I'm going to call this one... Um, I'm going to call this a particle text base. And I'm going to put that on the disk. Let me call the disk, disk particle base. Okay. And then let's go into the emitter and under the object tab, instead of an ellipse, let's do an object. And the object we're going to use is that disk. And then we are going to emit from the texture. So let's actually set up the texture. So I'm going to double click on this icon and then bring over this window. And it doesn't really matter what channel you use. Um, out of habit, I'm going to use the, the luminance. And then I'm going to add to this, I'm going to add a noise. And let's go into the noise. And I'm going to leave it at a standard noise. Um, but I'm going to bring up the scale to 250. And then just uh, bring up the contrast right up to 100%. And then we can play with the low and the high clip. Uh, we, could, we could alter this later on, uh, depending on where we get the particles. And then we can also change the seed. So maybe something like, that's nice. That's good too. We can always come back and change this later on. So let's keep this for now. And let's go back into the emitter and let's rename this one because this is going to be the one they spawn from. So these are the base, uh, the base particles. So let's call that base. And uh, in the emitter, we now have a texture tab. So let's pull in our texture. And then we need to tell it what channel we're using. It's assuming we're using the color, but we're not. So I'm going to set that to... Uh, luminance and then the color channel we can set that to none so now let's play back so now we can see that they're only emitting from the white areas but there, it's emitting way too many particles I just want to have a few particles at this point so let me zoom in here and let's go to the emission tab first of all I don't want it to be so fast so let me set it to just 20 and birth rate 1,000, uh, I'm going to change that. But I'm also going to change the emission mode. Right now, it's set to rate. But I want pulse. And in the, in the pulse here, uh, right now, the length, the duration is going to be one frame. And then the interval is 30. So every 30th frame, we're going to get a burst. So let's take a look at what that is. And then you see, so every 30th frame, we're going to get a burst of particles. Now, I want to increase or decrease this, I should say, to, I think, 8 is going to do it. 
And then the birth rate, though, I'm going to bring that right down to 1. Uh, we could potentially do a variation of 1, but I just want a few particles. So let's try now. Okay, so it's working. Now, the particles are really small. Uh, so I like to work in, in the display option here. We have the editor display. Right now it's dots, which is the fastest in the viewport. Um, but to see this a little bit better, we can either use circle or circle filled. And uh, I'm going to use circle filled for this, and it's going to be more apparent later on when we have more uh, particles, uh, why this is beneficial. So let's do circle filled. And that's going to give us the actual true size of the particles. So that looks good. Now, I certainly want more than 90 frames. So let's just bring this up to, say, 300. And uh, I actually want smaller particles. So let me go to the object. Uh, in fact, it's emission tab. And then the radius, I'm going to change to 0.5. Uh, but with a variation of 0.5, so they're going to be anywhere between 0 and 1. So if I play this back now, we're going to get this, some variance, and those are the particles. So that's a good start. So now they're just going straight up. Uh, they all have the same speed. So let's, uh, let's make this a little bit more interesting. So let's go to modifiers. I'm going to start by just adding a simple turbulence. Let's just play that back, see what we get. So now they're moving a lot more. Now I actually don't want them to move on the y-axis. I'm going to disable the y-axis. Play this again. And then I'm going to bring down the scale. Right now the scale is too big. I want them to be more affected on an individual level. So I'm going to bring down the scale to 10. And I also don't need the frequency to be this high, so maybe 30. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it's looking better. Uh, I'm going to increase the strength to 10. And let's try again. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But I don't want them to just take off like that. I want them to have some movement and move around. Um, but I still want them to go kind of straight up at the same time. Uh, so one way that we can uh, try to achieve that is if we go into the dynamic objects, and we have something called the flow field. And the flow field is a very good object to use in many cases. Um, you, you, can, you can direct the flow of the particles in many different ways. This is just one way. So right now you can see the arrows are pointing in um, the Z direction. Um, but you can also use, say, for example, oh, not that one. We could use, say, uh, like, a, like a target. We could use uh, along a spline. This is a very versatile um, a tool. So I'm just going to use it in a very simple way. Uh, I don't want it to go that direction. I want it to go straight up. So I'm just going to take this guy and let me stop this. And let me just rotate that straight down to 90 degrees and then play it again. So the particles are going straight up now, but they still have a little bit of life. Um, this flow field is very good to use, but um, it's hard to see with all those arrows. So let's uh, just hide it from the view. And uh, let's play this back. OK, so we're getting somewhere. Uh, we can certainly play with the flow field here a little bit more. And um, we can, for example, uh, right now, this is set to direction. Um, I, I'm going to set this to a velocity. And then it's, right now, the speed is 200%. Uh, which is <laughs> way too fast. Uh, so I'm actually going to reduce this to a really low number, just four. Let me zoom in there a little bit. We don't want these particles to go fast. Now I can increase this one because right now um, there is a bit of a balance act between the turbulence and the flow field. If I bring this up, you can see that they're going to be probably even slower. Let's see. Let's play this back. 
Yeah, see, now they're, they're really slow. But I still want them to move a little bit more from the turbulence. So I'm going to bring this down to, say, 10. So, I think that's good. Uh, that's the base for uh, the spawning that we're going to do now. So, let's stop this. And then let's add modifiers. And this is the generate modifiers. And we want an XP spawn. And then we also need to create an emitter. We can take this emitter with the same values. Just control drag or command drag that up. And I'm going to call this one spawn. Spawn. And I also want to keep them uh, uh, visually different. So in the base, I'm going to go to the display again. And I'm just going to make the icon color consistent with the particle color. Uh, so I'm going to, you can take this little eye uh, dropper and just sample that color. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same for this one, and then I'm going to sample that one. So now this one is going to be orange. All right? So we're not going to see any difference yet, but we're going to go to the spawn, and then in the spawning emitter field, just drag down the XP emitter spawn. And then let's just play it back and see what we get. So you can see now we get a lot of particles. And in the settings, let me pull this up. So in the settings, right now, we have a spawn number of 300 particles, and it's per second. Um, I want one. And if I play this back now, we're going to have way less particles. I don't want it to be per second. I want it to be per frame. And now we're going to get more particles. But I also want the new emitter to spawn from those new particles. So if I actually look at the XP emitter spawn, and if we look at the modifiers tab, you can see that as a precaution, the XP spawn is in the excluded list. And that's just because if it's not, it's going to generate a lot of particles. And that's going to crash your system pretty quickly if you're not careful. Um, now, I actually want to display the amount of particles we have in the viewport. So I'm going to go to Edit, and then uh, Preferences. And then in the X Particles Preferences option, um, we can go and we can say Show the HUD. And now we're going to see the amount of particles that we have in the scene. So if I delete this from the exclude list, now it's gonna, we're going to get a lot more particles. So I'm going to go very slowly with this. I'm going to just gonna use the G key to go forward one frame at a time. And keep an eye on the count here. Right now it's 8. But now it's going to grow really quickly. So now we're already on 8,000 and we're on frame 13. Uh, so we need to be a little careful here. Um, so one way that we can control this is if we go into the XP emitter spawn, we have an extended data that we can use values from. So if I go, say, for in instance, the physical data here, we have all these data that we're not really using, um, but we can use them as uh, sort of dummy data. Because if I look on the XP spawn, we have a mapping option. And if I click Add, I can control the spawn number. I can map that to a value and a value that we can set. So if I go to the XP emitter spawn and I say, for example, it doesn't really matter which one we use, uh, but we can use smoke. If I set smoke to 50 and a variation of 50, that means that they're going to have a value of anything between 0 and 100 because 50 the variation goes below and above. So it's 50 down to 0 and then up to 100. So now if I go into my spawn and I say, uh, let me give it, get some more room. I want to map this uh, offset value here. Actually, we want to have a spawn number. I want to map that to, uh, let me get even more space. I want to map that to the smoke. 
So now we can select a range. Um, let me just pull this down here. So we have just a small portion here. Um, if I play this back, I think I forgot to do something. Yes. Um, we also need to tell the original emitter because not right now we added the mapping of smoke and the original base emitter doesn't have any smoke value. So we need to add that to that as well. So we can set smoke to just 100%. So now if I go frame by frame, you can see that it is indeed emitting but it's not emitting as many. So now I can even play this. But it's still gonna still gonna <laughs> get too many particles pretty quickly. So we can, we can go into the XP spawn, the mapping, and we can control this. Uh, if we want to have a little bit more space, um, I tend to right click and say show in separate window, and then we can make this a lot larger. So we can get some more precision that way. So let me see, let me see, maybe we're going to have to come back and forth to play with this. But I think maybe something like this. And let's play this back. So I think that's a reasonable value. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to have the base emitter spawn the entire 300 frames here. So I'm going to go to, say, frame 139, and then go to the emitter base, and actually it's under emission. I'm just going to set the birth rate uh, for, to 1, and then next frame, I'm just going to set it to 0. Just set a keyframe on that. Okay. So that's good. So let's play this back. So now it's going to stop uh, coming out of our surface ground there. So now we are one step uh, on our way. Um, the way that I am going to have these particles come together, clump together, and stick together is by using XP constraints. I also want to see the particles a little bit better. Right now they're just blobby orange dots here, so it's hard to tell them apart. So one thing that we can do, and, and this is the reason why we chose the circle filled rather than just a circle, because now we can enable the, the ambient occlusion here, so we can see them a little bit better. It's not great, uh, but it's certainly better than before. So I think we still have too many. Uh, so to make this a little quicker to work with, let me just reduce that range even a little bit. Okay. And then let's go to Dynamics, and then let's enable XP Constraints. Now, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted XP Constraints. And actually, before I even do anything with the constraints, um, I think I want to have them scale up. Right now, they're just popping on um, with the scale that they're going to have. Um, but we can actually have them grow on, which is probably going to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, so let's go to modifiers and let's add, uh, this is a control modifier, XP scale. And what I want is the spawn has a size of between uh, 0 and 1.5 and the variation of 0.5. So in the XP scale, what we can do under the operation, right now it's change value over time, absolute, so it's going to increase with 0.2 centimeters, which is going to have a more dramatic effect on the smaller particles. So we do have change value over time relative, which is going to take into account their birth size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them increase by 40%. They're going to grow up pretty quickly. And I also want to set a limit here. So I'm going to set the smallest they can be is 0.1 and the largest they can be is 1. And then I want to make sure that I clamp that within the range. So now they're going to grow, they're going to they're going to be born smaller and then grow as they get older, but they're going to grow up pretty quickly. Good. Okay, so now back to the constraints. 
I'm gonna use two things in the constraints. And the first thing is collisions. I want them to collide with each other. So I'm gonna enable collisions. And uh, we can just take a look at, see what that's gonna do. And <laughs> yes, they are certainly colliding. Um, so I'm gonna set the stiffness to 60 and you can certainly play with this. And I've played a lot with this, but 60 is a value that I came up with. Uh, it comes down to this, the, um, the type of spring you wanna have between them or when they collide. Now, under connections, we have birth, distance, but we also have this really interesting option, custom. So I'm gonna enable the custom option. And with a custom option, you can create uh, these spring-like motions because you have compression and expansion. So you have them coming together and moving away and they're creating connections between each other and you can create some really cool springy effects, for example. Uh, and in order to see this better, we can go into the emitter and then under display, and we can enable constraints. And then, uh, let's see, let's go back to this, and then I am gonna set a connection limit, how many of these springs can connect was the maximum and I'm going to set this to 70 and then radius of, say, within what range can they connect. So let's just see what we get now. And now you can see the constraint. You can see how they're connected to each other. <laughs> Looks a little crazy now, but... Like that. Okay, so the connection limit is 70, and then they're gonna connect within 60 centimeters, and we can always play with this. Um, we have lots of options here, but we have the compression when they come together, and then the expansion, what happens when they are moving away from each other, and what happens with their connections, and how do they behave. Um, we also have something called plastic, and plastic is when the connection is, or the connection is broken, uh, and uh, what are the, how can they become broken? And the rate and the plastic here are connected. I'm not gonna use plastic, so I'm actually gonna set the plastic to zero in the compression when they come together. And I'm gonna set this expansion plastic up really, 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 really high, so it doesn't become a factor. And the rate is, is determining how quickly uh, they become plastic or not um, connecting to each other anymore. So this one doesn't do anything. So we might as well take that down to zero not to conf get confused by it. Okay, so we have compression 60% and 80%. The lower you go in the compression and expansion here, the more springy uh, the effect is gonna be. So for example, if I put this to zero point, oops, zero point uh, zero or one, and uh, it's a good idea to keep these at the same. <laughs> keep them at the same, I say, and put a different value in. Okay. So now they're going to be springy. Um, let's, let's play. Let's just see what we get. And oh, it's we're, we're getting some craziness here. We also need to make sure that they break a little sooner, and that is this value here. We have the compression break and then the expansion break. And I wanna make sure that they actually break pretty quickly. Uh, I'm gonna set this value to 11. So now you can see they, break, you, they don't form as many connections. And this in itself looks, I mean, this could look pretty cool uh, as an effect. Um, now, I, do, I don't want them to be so springy. I'm gonna have a much more uh, solid effect. It's gonna be a lot more stiff. Uh, I'm going to set the compression to 8 and the expansion to 8 as well. Um, but play around with this. Um, you can spend hours just playing because it's so much fun. So now we have these little clumps coming together. And uh, let's uh, disable the constraints now. We don't need to see it anymore. Just wanted to show you. So turn it off. And let's play it back again. And... Now, it looks fine from this distance, but ultimately, uh, I am going to focus on a few of these clumps with a long lens. So 
the speed is actually a little, a little too fast for that. Uh, so there are different ways we can solve that, but a really good way to solve it is if we go into modifiers and in the motion modifiers, I added the turbulence. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to add um, drag, XP drag. So by adding an XP drag, we can put it in a different medium. So for example, air. Um, I think I'm going to use ethanol. Just play that back. It's going to be a little slower now. And I can, I can go even higher here if I want. So this is a, a good way to control the speed. Now, one thing to bear in mind is um, we may not get the speed. See, it's slowing down now. It's not playing back too slowly, but right, it's 15 frames per second. And bear in mind that it's going to be 30 frames per second. So this right now is only half the speed back. So this is going to appear much faster when we have it at full speed. But I think that's actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that uh, speed. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to, I think I'm going to cache this. So let's go to other objects and then let's select XP cache. And uh, I'm going to just use all as is and then just um, cache this, um, build it. Okay, so we are cached. Let's play this back. And uh, yeah, it's a lot quicker now that we've cached it, but I, I think it's okay. Um, you can uh, go in and tweak and get the, the speed that you want uh, of this. I'm going to stick with this. So let's go ahead and frame this. Um, so let's add a camera. Let's actually clean this up a little bit. Let's organize. Uh, let me add a null. I'm going to call this one scene. And then let's con control drag that up. And again, and I'm going to call this one cameras or camera. And this is going to be for lights or light. And then let's take all our stuff and then bring that into the scene and then I'm gonna add a camera so let's go to add camera and then put that in the cameras folder and I'm gonna look through the camera so let's uh, go to a frame where we have some of these clumps say here for example so the type of camera that I want, the default is going to be a 36 millimeter in cinema. Um, but I want to have a much more zoomed in camera. I don't want to have all these clumps. I just want to focus in on a few at a time. Uh, so we need to create a long lens for that. So let's go into the camera options. And under the focal length, let's switch that to a 300 millimeter. And we can hit H to frame that. And then let's just find an angle that makes sense. Now, we're also not going to see the disk. So let me turn off the visibility. Alt. Click on the stop lights, or the traffic lights. And then let's just see. Also, we're going to have uh, a fairly heavy depth of field effect for this. So let's see kind of want to have something in the, on the right side there. Uh, I'm going to also change the aspect here. So I'm going to go to the settings and output. And we have the standard 16.9 output. Um, the less that we have in the frame, the better. Uh, it's easier. It's going to look better with a really wide crop, especially since we have a lot of these, uh, these little spheres. So if we can have a few focus objects, it's going to look better. Uh, so I'm going to do the, the really wide panavision. And then I'm also going to get the tinted border color up a little bit. So under option, um, if we go to configure, we have view, and then we have the tinted border, which controls this. Uh, I just want to have more separation, so 95%. So it's easier to frame the shot that way. At least I think so. 
Uh, and then let's uh, see if we can find an angle that works. And I mean, we're not going to see them from the beginning. We're gonna, they're going to appear at some point. Going to travel through maybe here and then disappear on the top. So I don't want it to be so busy. I want to have just a, a just a main object to focus on. Perhaps this one. If I play this back, let's see what we get. So now I was coming in. We have more. And then they travel up, and then they disappear. And um, I can probably go down a little bit. Let me try that. Okay, pops on a little quicker. Ah, not crazy about that, but um, maybe this is better after all. And I'm going to zoom in or dolly in on, say, this guy. And then make sure that we have some of these in the background. Um, let's try that. And in the original sample that I showed you, we had some more stuff. We had um, some particles floating around, uh, and I had an animated camera. But for this, I think this is going to be just fine. Uh, so let's say this one, maybe. And I kind of like this. So let's see. Okay, floating up, floating up, floating up. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. That's good. That's gonna be my camera angle, and I'm not gonna animate this. Uh, you could, but I'm just gonna keep it as a state as stationary camera. But I do want to lock the camera so I don't move it out of position. And with Cinema 4D Release 21, they've shifted the tags, the location of the tags around. So if I right click now, I actually have to look for the protection tag. Um, and I think it's under, yeah, it's under rigging tags now. So now we can add protection. So we can't move the camera accidentally. And let's go to a frame where we can actually see the particles. I think this is a good frame. And I'm going to render this with Cycles 4D. So to this camera, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Cycles 4D tags and a camera tag. And then we need to light the scene here a little bit. Um, so let me first create a material. And actually, before I do any of that, these emitters, we need to add tags to them as well. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Cycles 4D tags and then uh, an instance tag and then control drag that. And uh, let's also add a material. So create. Cycles 4D, and I'm going to make an object material. And I'm going to call this uh, just uh, spawned. I'm going to put that on the spawn. And uh, I am going to switch uh, the layout here now. So instead of this layout, I'm going to do the one with cycles. Okay, so this is my cycles or tutorial cycles layout. Uh, and uh, we have the nodes on the left hand side. And then in the middle here, we have the cycles for the real time preview. And then the attributes manager is down here. And then we have our perspective view here. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and light this and give, my, give myself some more space. So before we use the nose, let's just maximize the space here a little bit and pull this down. So I am going to add a target light. And what happened to my lights? There they are. OK, target light. Uh, because the target comes in in the middle of the scene, and it's easy to aim at the camera, and I want it to to be aimed straight down. So a target light does that for me. Um, you can see here we have a light target. So if I take these guys and I pull them into the lights folder, and then to, to because we're going to render with Cycles 4D, I need to add a tag to this. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say 
cycles 4D tags, and then in this is a light. And then the type of light that I want, if I click on the options here, um, right now it's set to a point light, but I want an area light. And I also want this light to be large. So I'm going to set the size up to 600 by 600. And um, if I hit on the real-time preview now, we're going to start seeing the spheres. Um, I need to place the light, so I'm going to go back into the perspective view. I'm going to hit F5 to see uh, all the different angles, all the camera angles. And what I want to do is I want to take uh, this light and make sure I have the move tool, and I do. And uh, I'm going to put pull that and put that right on top of our spheres. And then in this front view, I can go and I can say... Pull this one straight up. So this is all very top lit. So that's a good start. Now, I am also going to make this a very saturated, a blue color, a saturated light. And way more intense. Right now it's 100. I'm going to whack this up to 2,000. So we have a lot of light going on here. So I'm going to call this light the top light and then I'm gonna duplicate this light and this new light I'm gonna call side uh, light uh, funny spelling but let's keep that and I'm gonna turn off the top light I want to see the side light all by itself uh, and I don't want this to be a blue light I want it to be very saturated but in the orange hue Something like that. And I want this to be a much milder light. So 100 on the intensity. So this has uh, much less of an impact. And then let's also pull this down. Uh, so I'm going to pull this down. And in the top view, I can move it to the side. Something like so. We may have to come back and adjust this. But I think something like this is going to work. Oops, I don't want to resize it. And uh, we can play with this. Maybe something more from the angle of the camera. Something like that. I think that's going to work. We can always come back and tweak this. Okay, so let's say that that is the light. Let's look at both of them at the same time. Okay, good. So let's go back F1 to see only the perspective view. And let's make this a little smaller now. Because now it is time to make the materials. So uh, let's see. Let's pull this up. And uh, let's open up the spawn material. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do here, let me move this out of the way here. I am getting some interesting uh, cutoff effect there. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, but let me right click and I'm going to bring in an input and then um, particle info. Okay, I had to stop the recording. I was getting too many glitches in the interface. Not sure if that's a bug or not. I haven't seen that before. Uh, so I went back to release 20 and open up the project. Uh, so we let's texture that. Let's texture the the spheres in R20. So in the nodes here, um, I am gonna add a color to this. Let's turn on the uh, real time preview, and I'm gonna add an input particle info. And in the particle info, I'm simply gonna use the random. So if I put that into the color, and if I click on the word random, we can see what's being generated. So now this is uh, in solo mode. So we get random values, random grayscale values. So what we can do is in between here, we can pipe a color ramp. So let's put a color ramp, and let's uh, solo that instead. And on this side, I'm going to add like a greenish color, maybe more aqua, something like that. 
not too saturated, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add on this side, I'm going to make this bluish, dark, something, yeah, something like that. I think that's going to be okay. And then if I unsolo that, we have this. Now, I'm also going to go into our main material here, and I'm going to leave almost everything at its default, but I'm going to enable transmission. And I'm going to up this to point uh, 55. So, when you are dealing with transmission and transparency, what you want to do is you want to go to the render settings, and in Cycles 4D, if I scroll down here a little bit, we have the max ray bounces set to one by default. And that typically isn't enough when you're dealing with transparency, especially with several objects. You need to tell the rays to bounce more times. So one isn't gonna cut it. So let's increase this to five. And you can already start seeing that we get some more transparency. And it's gonna be more apparent as we add some light sources to this. So let's close that. And so to this, what I want to happen is that as the particles are born, I want them to be emissive. I want them to be glowing. And then as they get older, I want them to turn into this glass material. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add a shader. I'm going to add emission. And I'm going to add a converter. I'm going to use a black body for this. If I pipe that into the color, and then if I solo this, now we can see the color. So with the black body, um, if we increase this, we're going to get more of a bluish value. I'm going to go to something like 34, 35, something like that. I'm also going to increase the emission strength to 16. It's going to be quite bright. So now I need to blend these together, and the way I'm going to blend them together is to use a mix shader. Let's put this a little bit further down, and then right-click and say Shader, Mix Shader. And then I am going to take this material, pipe that into the top slot, the emission to the bottom slot, and then unsolo that, and put this into the output of the material. So now the emission is completely taken over because it's so strong. Even if I go into the factor and lower this, we're still going to get a very, very strong result. So the way I'm going to control this is by using the age from the particles. So if I just take that and pipe that into the factor, and you can actually see something happen there. Uh, but let's add... Uh, a converter and a color ramp in between so we can control this a little bit better and let's solo this so we can see what's going on you can already see that some of them are darker and dark gray and if I do this you know what I'm gonna flip these and then let me make another one there so you can see that the further I go the more of an influence the bright ones are going to have. So if I unsolo this um, and oh, I used the alpha instead. Hold on. Let me put that into the factor. So now you can see that if I move these knots around, you can get more or less of an effect. So if I push this dark a little further to the right, then they're going to be glowing longer. And if I go further to the left, then they're going to be glowing just for a very short period of time. So I'm going to leave it at something like this. We may have to come back and adjust this as we go. So that's set up. Now let's do one more thing here. I want to blend this material with yet another glass material. So I'm going to right click and let's get a glass material and let's solo that and the color that I want is like a saturated blue color something like something like that and then I'm gonna reduce this to point 
65. This isn't going to be particularly realistic, and uh, that's not what I'm going for. Um, but now we need to mix these together, so I'm going to get another mix shader. And I'm going to put this at the top and the original material at the bottom and then pipe that in. So now we have this going on and if I take the factor and bring that down we can get more of the glass or the blue glass or we can get more of the original material. Uh, but we can also control this with uh, a layer weight which is like a Fresnel. So if I right click and I say input uh, layer weight we have a standard Fresnel but we also have a facing. They're similar uh, but I'm going to use the facing and I'm going to pipe that into the factor. So now we're looking more at the fall off of the light towards the sides of the spheres. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to pull it more in favor of the original material. Maybe something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Let me zoom in here a little bit more. So if I uh, go to another frame, we can see what's going to happen. Zoom out here a little bit. So I think that's, uh, that's good. Now one thing that could happen with this is that you may find that depending on how many particles you generate or how much you spawn, the glowing particles may start taking over. And if that is the case, you can actually introduce a little bit of randomness in which ones are getting the glowy, uh, the glowy start of their lives, so to speak. Um, and the way we can do that is we can look at, let's look at this material. Let's look at the material before we blended it with the blue glass. So here. So if I add another uh, shader, so shader, mix shader, and I put, and I'm going to put the original in the middle and I'm going to put this mix at the bottom. So now we have a mix between the original um, material we had and then the one that's been blended with the, the emission. Now if I want to have fewer spheres glowing, if I want to lessen the impact of the mix shader here, this top material, what we can do is we can reuse that random from the particle info. So if I go and I say let's do converter and then color ramp, plug that in here. And again we have a, a random value. If I just take this now and I plug this into the factor. Actually, in, in fact, before I do that, let me just show you in the mix shader. Uh, let's unsolo that. In the mix shader, if I pull the factor all the way to zero, we have only the original material, no emission. And now we have full on with the blend, this one. So if I want to have less glowy spheres, I can simply pull in this into the factor which is going to then it's going to be more favorable for um, the bottom material. So if I go, say, for example, want less of this, then you can simply pull in the black like this. And this is only if you get too many uh, glowing spheres. Uh, I found that if I shorten the life of the emissive material when they're born, if I shorten this life too much, uh, the transition between them glowing and being a glass material turned in became a little too abrupt. So that's why I added this at random. So not all are glowing as they're born. So it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, I am going to maybe pull back on this a little bit. So now we're almost ready, uh, almost done. Let me get that frame. But I don't want them to be completely glossy like this. I want to add a little bit of roughness on this surface, which is going to create a much more interesting look. So let's do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a texture, uh, just a noise texture. Um, noise texture. 
And um, I'm going to increase the scale. If I solo that, we can see what's going on. So I'm going to set the scale to just 7. And then I'm going to take this noise texture. I'm just going to control drag to make a copy of that. And then I'm going to take the color and put that into the vector. And then solo the next one. And I'm just going to increase the scale to 10. But I'm going to make, I'm going to distort this to say 16. And then I'm going to take this, I'm going to plug this into the displacement and then unsolo that. So now we can, you can see we have a much different kind of a look. The surface is much rougher. This is also going to be a little slower to render. Um, if it's too much, which I think it is in this case, we can temper this down a little bit. If I add another converter and then a color ramp, just put that in between. I can perhaps decrease the contrast between these. So make this a little lighter gray. And then maybe this one, I don't know, like a dark gray. That's going to lessen the impact a little bit, but it's really up to you. So if I zoom in on this now, and get some extra space. Let's also see if I can maximize this so we can see everything. And let's also enable the depth of field. I'm going to select the camera. And then we have a focus distance, distance picker. Let me focus on one of these guys over here. And then in the camera, I need to enable the depth of field. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to set a 0 0.05. A little goes a long way here. And uh, for this to clear, uh, we need quite a few samples. Uh, 25 is not going to be enough, but let's do that for now. I think you probably have to go up to 40 or 45 samples uh, if you do an animation. If you do a still, you could use uh, the denoiser. Um, but um, yeah, this is the final result. Uh, I'm not going to animate it. This is the final result. You can animate this out if you want. So that wraps up this tutorial, and I hope you learned something from it. And if you come up with a really cool design or something uh, from this, then shoot off a link. You can get the project files on velocitypeak.com, and all those details are below the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.